Hello everyone and welcome back to our online classroom here where you can learn psychology, research, and statistics. At ngayong araw, ang gagawin natin, um, aaralin natin yung tinatawag na descriptive statistics. Okay? So, I may have a separate lecture para sa topic na ito. Kasi for today, magpo-focus lang ako doon sa demonstration kung paano nyo ba makukuha yung descriptive statistics gamit ng isang software at kung paano ito i-interpret. Para sa inyo ba itong video na ito? To give you an idea, ito yung mga i-discuss ko. Mean, Median, Mode, Standard Deviation, Variance, at magpo-focus tayo sa skewness at mag -e end tayo with what we call normality gamit yung Shapiro Wilk Test. Ay yung software na gagamitin ko sa video na ito ay yung tinatawag na Jamovi na isang free statistical software that you can download kapag inopen nyo yung kanilang website. So I suggest na itry nyo rin ito sa inyong mga classes instead of using yung pong mga mamahali na software lalo na kung um, medyo mabigat po para sa ating bulsay mga software na yan. Alright? So, welcome back to our online classroom and let me first show you our data set but before we go to the... Alright, here is our data set. So, basically, napakasimpleng halimbawa. Ang gusto nating malaman kung may magbabago ba sa electric bill after ng intervention na gagawin natin. So, sir, anong intervention natin? Ang gusto lang naman natin gawin ay magkabit ng... Um, Say, for example, like, um, electricity or power consumption saver. Power saver, ganun. Okay, so gagawin natin itong isang before and after study or sa ibang field, you call this the pre-test and post-test. So, ang ating independent variable ay yung kanilang grouping. Same na bahay ito, ha? remember. Hindi magbabago ng bahay. Ang magbabago lang is before and after, ikabit yung power saver nila. Alright? So, o-observe natin kung magbabago ba yung kanilang electric bill bago at pagkatapos ikabit itong tinatawag na power saver. So, that's um, the agenda in this demonstration. So, how are we going to... Uh, paano natin yan edit, um, gagamitan ng descriptive stats? But first, notice that nung nilagay ko yung before and after, yung 1 and 2 dito ay napalitan na rin. So, That's something na maganda tungkol dito sa Jamovi. It's easy to use, pang estudyante, pang undergraduate. Pero at this, at, and at this point, pwede na tayong mag-start sa descriptives. So, i-click ang exploration at pindutin ang descriptives. At pagkatapos, sa magpa-pop up na window, i-drag niyo yung electric bill sa variable. Ito yung ating dependent variable. So, as you can see, nag-provide na siya sa atin ng initial... Um, descriptive stats. Alright? Nakikita natin yung N, which is 20 daw sa kanyang paningin. Pero alam natin na hindi talaga 20 ang N dahil 10 lang sila. Ito ang before and after. So, yan yung sinasabi ko na hindi naman lahat alam ng computer. Okay? Minsan, meron tayo mga bagay na alam na hindi maiintindihan ng computer, lalo na kasi hindi na, um, there's no way to specify in the movie that we are dealing with the same group. So, caution must be taken whenever you interpret data. Minsan, alam, meron tayong mga details na alam na hindi natin may input sa computer. But anyway, going back to this. Ito kasi, ang mapapansin nyo, um, ito po yung overall mean, median. Okay? Hindi pa siya nakahati na before and after. Eh, yun nga yung gusto nating malaman eh. So, paano kaya natin gagawin yun? Ang gusto kong gawin nyo ay i drag nyo yung grouping sa split by at aayusin nyo yung table na yan para sa'yo. Alright? And I guess it make more sense na. Ayan, ginawa na niyang 10. Alright? So, it's wrong to say na meron tayong 20 na bahay na participants but rather 10 lang na before and after. Alright? Tapos, um, pinapakita lang ng computer kung may missing data. Kung baga kung meron pang hindi sumagot sa survey, eh zero naman. Eh, di pwede na natin i-uncheck yung missing kasi hindi na natin kailangan yan. Alright? So, ano naman po yung mean? Yan yung average consumption. At makikita natin na mas mataas yung average na uh, binayaran nila sa electric bill bago yung power saver. At bumaba ito ng bahagya after the power saver. So, that's something to be happy about. Lalo na ako ikaw yung researcher nito. 
Yung median, yan po yung alternative na pwede nyong gamitin na descriptive statistic. Okay? Kapag po, um, may mga pagkakataon kasi na hindi accurate si mean. In example, kunyari sa klase, di ba, mababa yung nakuha ng lahat ng estudyante, tapos may isang sobrang taas ng score, nahahata kasi ni average eh. So the downside in using mean is that nangahatak siya ng mga extreme score. In this case, lahat naman sila around 2,000 yung bill, may mangilan-ngilan lang na nasa 3,000. Kaya nahahatak nila yung mean pataas. Kaya kung mapapansin nyo, mas mababa ng bahagya yung median. So that may be a good reason na i-consider nyo i-report yung median instead na yung mean. Okay, but at the end of the day, sa researcher pa rin yan babagsak yung decision na yan. Pero ang advice ko dyan, the rule of thumb is, kung medyo tagilid o tabingi yung ating distribution, gamitin nyo na yung median instead of the mean. So, sir, paano malalaman kung tabingi o tagilid yung distribution? Diyan natin yan makikita sa skewness na gagawin natin maya-maya lang. Ano po yung minimum and maximum? The minimum is the smallest value o binayaran, 2,133. Pinakamahal sa before is 3,9. Bumabayan sa minimum na 1799 after the power saver at bumaba yung kanilang um, after from 39 naging 3688. So may natipid pa rin okay, kahit yung pinakamatindi ma mag-consume ng electricity. But um, minsan tinatanggal na yung minimum and maximum pero wag na natin tanggalin, lagay lang natin dyan. So ngayon, we can check on the standard deviation, the variance, and the range. So sir, para naman saan po yung standard deviance? At before that, I think we forgot the mode. I-check din natin. Okay, yung mode po yung pinaka na uulit na number sa distribution. But as you, can, as you can see, may parang maliit na asterisk doon sa taas ng number. At sabi ng ating legend dito, more than one mode exists. Kung baga... Um, Maraming mode eh. Kaya ang masasabi ko, hindi palagi nare-report yung mode sa research paper. Madalas, it's the mean and the median. Alright? So, anyway, ngayon naman, tingnan natin yung standard deviation at yung variance. We can talk about this sa uh, separate lecture. Pero ang pinupunto ng standard deviation at ng variance is that ito po yung kalat kung gaano po ka-spread ang iyong data. So as you can see, mas mataas yung standard dev ng, ng before kaysa sa after, meaning mas kalat yung data. But as you can see, konti lang yung diferensya na hindi yan malaki. So we can say na pareho lang yung kalat o yung distribution ng ating um, data. Kung baga, kapag yung mga nag exam dikit-dikit yung score, maliit yung standard dev. Pero kung hiwa-hiwala yung score nila, kunyari 1 to 100, doon tumataas yung standard deviation. Yung variance, in square lang yung standard deviation. And as you can see, sobrang laki ng variance. Parang kung ilalagay mo yan sa research paper mo, it doesn't make sense. That's why, at mahirap siya interpret. That's why, in square root na lang siya at nire-report yung tinatawag na standard deviation. Another alternative is to use the range. Kaso hindi rin siya madalas gamitin sa research paper. Yung range naman po, ito yung... Um, the difference between the maximum and the minimum. Kung baga, maximum minus minimum is equal the range. Okay? Hindi ko it, honestly, hindi ko ito madalas gamitin. Kasi what if sobrang taas ng maximum, sobrang baba ng minimum, edi eh magiging sobrang laki ng range. Right? So, yan yung mga issues sa stats na gusto kong malaman ninyo as early as now. So, ngayon, ang gawin na natin, tingnan na natin kung tabingi ba yung ating distribution by checking on skewness. Ayan, habang nagko-compute siya, let me show a web page to you. Paano po mo mag-interpret ng skewness? So, let me switch to the other window. Ayan. Kapag ang skewness daw po ay zero, ibig sabihin well-distributed siya. Sana napanood nyo na yung lecture ko about sa normal curve. Dapat ang skewness malapit or dapat zero so that normally distributed siya. Kasi kung hindi na siya nagsisiro, ibig sabihin po tumatabingi na yung distribution natin na para bang ganito, Ito yung positively skewed. Pag positively skewed, maraming mababa, konti lang yung mataas. Pag negatively skewed, maraming mataas, konti lang yung mababa. Okay? So, kung yung value ng ating skew ay positive, ibig sabihin, ganito siya. Pero kung yung value ng ating skew ay negative, ibig sabihin, ganito siya. Okay? So, what's the rule of thumb in interpreting skewness? If the skewness is between negative 0.5 to 0.5, ibig sabihin ay fairly symmetrical or normally distributed. 
Pero kung yan na po ay nasa pagitan ng 0.5 to 1, okay, or negative 1 to negative 0.5, medyo tumatabingi na siya. Pero kung hihigit pa yan sa 1, or mas bababa pa sa negative 1, mas malayo sa 0, ibig sabihin sobrang tabingi na ng ating distribution. So, tingnan natin, ano ba yung lumabas doon sa ating computation ng skewness? Let's see that. So, sa skewness, actually, ayan, no? medyo lumayo na siya from, zero, um, from 0.5. Lumagpas na siya. Okay, kumbaga, what we can learn is total nasa pagitan siya ng, ng 0.5 at ng 1 at walang negative, walang negative sign, meaning ito po ay um, positively skewed. Later, papakita ko yung chart sa inyo para mag-gets nyo. At ang ibig sabihin nito, medyo tabingi na yung ating distribution. So, medyo lang naman. Okay? So, you might consider using the median over the mean. Pero kapag ito ay sobrang skewed na, as in nag-1 na ito, or negative 1 pababa, sure na kayo gamitin nyo na yung median kasi sobrang tabingi na ng distribution nyo. So, to further support that conclusion, we have a test of normality known as Shapiro-Wilk. So, let's check on the Shapiro-Wilk. Okay, wait for a moment. It's not responding. Sige, check natin yung shapiro will. Actually, advanced stats na ito, pero magandang matutunan yung ahead of time. Sa so, shapiro will po, kapag um, significant siya, which is pareho siyang hindi significant, eh. pareho siyang mas mataas than 0.05. Eh. Pag significant kasi siya, ibig sabihin, tabing yung distribution. Pero kapag hindi significant, ibig sabihin, normally distributed, eto pong before, malapit na siya sa 0.05. So, ibig sabihin, although hindi niya na-reach yung cut-off, you will be cautious in interpreting the before kasi malapit na siyang mag-significant or malapit ng tubabingi yung kanyang distribution. So, sir, ano pang ibig sabihin ng tabingi yung distribution na yan? Eti, gamitin natin yung, gamitin natin yung plot feature ng Jamovi. At let's check on what we call density. At mag-generate siya ng report for us. Tingnan natin kung ano yung magi Ayan, di ba? Ito po yung sinasabi ko. Hindi siya yung normally distributed na isa lang yung tok-tok tapos ina isa lang yung tok-tok tapos well spread sa gilid. But rather, ito po ay tabinging distribution. So, ayan. That is the proof that the distribution is skewed positively. Kasi nga, pag positively skewed, remember what I show you in the webpage. Konti lang dito sa right side, marami sa left side. At ito yung patunay na all, um, malapit na siya talaga magi skewed But sabi ng ating Shapiro Will, um, it's not so bad after all. Pero konting ano na lang, <laughs> konting data pa baka maging significant na yan at maging totally skewed na yung ating data. So, I hope marami kayong natutunan from this learning session. I hope mat makatulong ito sa inyong research paper at sana um, makatulong din ito sa inyong lesson sa klase. And I hope bumalik kayo for the next tutorial and let me know kung meron pa kayong gustong matutunan. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe, and, and share this with your friends, with your teachers, with your students. Thank you. Have a nice day.